Check it out. This is Phil from New York Rocks, and we're rocking down here at the Funkadelic in Times Square. And I'm with no other than the man right here, Benzel Baltimore. In New York. How y'all doing? Currently the drummer for P-Funk. Yeah. Here at Funkadelic Studios Mm -hmm. with a couple friends. Showing the love. Showing the love. Hanging out on New York Rocks TV. That's how it is, man. But, hey, you're over here, and you got your friends here. Hey, bring your friends along. See, you know, just think about yourself. See? Yeah, from Baltimore City representing. <laughs> okay, well, let's go back and let's find out a little bit of history of yourself. You're from Baltimore. You have music in your family, but you started out and you play the drums, right? Correct. So let's start. How'd you get interested in playing music and how'd you get into the drumming? Go ahead. I've been playing drums my whole life. I've been inspired from my father, Mm -hmm. who was a trumpet player for George Clinton, the Parliament Funkadelic, to this day, Mm -hmm. and being around guys like Dennis Chambers and Rodney Skeet Curtis, and the list goes on and on. George Clinton, of a lot of great musicians, it just kept me going, and every school I went to, I was playing drums. I started playing in church at age 11, and I still play in church today, so I was inspired by, you know, God, Mm -hmm. and... uh, now I'm here today, and I'm very blessed to have this opportunity to be traveling the world. Mm-hmm. Now, your father played the trumpet, but you chose the drums. Now, what made you get interested in playing the drums? Like, was it like, hey, you know, you uh, picked up the pots and pans and started making noise in the house? Yeah, I, w- I was pot and panning in, yeah. in the very beginning, and my dad tried to push the trumpet on me, and I played it for a little while. But uh, as soon as the teeth, the front teeth came out, it was a good excuse to not play because it hurts to blow with the no front teeth. So <laughs> I got away with playing drums more. But I, you know, I play a little bit of trumpet. Nobody knows that. But <laughs> not come out one day, baby. Yeah, maybe. The okay. whole world knows you just told them. Man. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm putting it out there for them. All right, cool, man. All right, so then your history of playing drums, uh, you played in other bands before you got your you got a break, and what was your break? Your break was what, 99? But you played the drums for other bands? Go ahead. What would you play? Uh, I played with local bands, you know, coming up, starting at about age 15. I was doing shows outside of church. Right. And actually in 1999, I got the opportunity to sit in at Woodstock 99 mm-hmm. in front of over a hundred thousand people plus pay-per-view and all that other stuff well, and then what's, what now was with parliament with? funkadelic okay. and i just asked george one day and he was just crazy enough to say yeah go ahead kid yeah, yeah. and at the time i was 15 years old but i've been practicing this music for a long time uh my dad was you know whipping it on me so and your dad was still playing trumpet with the at funk this time yes and, and still to this day as well yeah Mm-hmm. Okay. From '78 to now. What's your What's your dad's uh, name? On His name is okay. Benny Cowan, the General. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what happened in '99? Who'd you actually fill in for? Because you're like, you had a drummer, right? And then, oh, of course, they got yeah. a couple drummers and and all respect. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny, really, because um, on the drum set right now, it's it's me and it's Ron Wright. We're the two drummers, and actually in Woodstock '99. It was Frank Cash Whitey. Uh, I think Rico might have been out there. And it was Ron Wright. Right. So that was Ron Wright's song. And at the time when I started playing, it was very political because I was little and I was playing the drums. And these gr- drummers are grown men. They're like, man, I ain't let them play right now. Da, da. But, mm-hmm. you know, once George say let it happen, let it happen. And once I got that experience right. to really play in, on a real stage in front of people at a young age, I already had the vision. That I had to do this. How old were you? 15 years old. 15. So I was like, okay, well, I got to visit. I got to do it. There's no way you're going to do that and then be like, I'm not going to play anymore. (laughs) You must have been really charged up seeing all the people. Uh, Is is that the most people it had to be, right? At that time, it was. You know, now you do these European tours, all of them look like that, you know? Wow. Yeah. So you come a long way. So so uh, from that time in 99, you uh, stayed with the funk as the permanent drummer, or what happened? Yeah. Well, that was just a sit-in, and then I went back to high school and right. went back to normal life and just practicing in the basement and, you know, trying to gig with local groups at that time. Like, I had a little band called Nine Deuce and a band called Suburban Super Group. Okay. And, you know, I original, had a band. Original bands? Original bands, yes. And then I'm... 
you know, later on I had a band called CTW with my friend Ian that's going to be playing with me tonight. We had a Some little of your band. Some friends are here. We're going to talk to them. I also had a band, Let the Monkey Go, with my friend uh, Andre that plays guitar. from that band, so I brought him out too. And uh, I brought my friend on in the Didge mm-hmm. from P-Funk. I got Richie Shaker Nagin from P-Funk. Okay. Shaker Man. Mm-hmm. Who else I got? And I got Will Vic that I gig with in Baltimore around town. So, you know, give him back a little bit. And he got a guy from Australia here with a <laughs> strange instrument. He's from guy. L.A., but he's got that the didgeridoo. That's what he does. Didgeridoo. Yeah, didgeridoo. shout out to Will. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Garanga Tang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, Treze? You know, this is what we do. Yes, this is this is this is really some. uh, (laughs) It's like hip hop, but it's got the didgeri as the percussion for the hip hop. There should be a song, Digimidoo. Digeri. But we can go Digima. I like Digima. Let's let's do that. (laughs) (laughs) Digima. Inspire something going on over here, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, we, you know, you're at the funk and you're you're at the Funkadelic Studios, and I'm here with the oh, half right. of the P Funk right here. You got to be funky, right? It's, this is true. Funky. This is true. Right? Yes. Okay. Now, um, what's going on with you now? Now, take me up to date. You're still with the funk, and you're touring around, and you played all over the world. Talk about We're some of that again. <laughs> We're going to do it again. We're uh, starting at the NAM show, which will be in about a week or so. We'll be at NAM, right. and we're performing there. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to do a little tour, mm-hmm. and then we're going to be preparing ourselves for Australia. Wow. And then after that, we'll be going to Japan and then I think some Europe stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So that will probably go into the summertime. Mm-hmm. You know. Did you record any uh, music with them or albums or a new album or new material? Actually, George has a new album out. I don't think I'm on any of the songs, though, but I will be on some other stuff. We actually did a record with Josh Stone and George Clinton out at Metropolis Studios in London. So I did that, and uh, I've been down George's studio lately recording on some things, some upcoming stuff coming out soon. Okay. So let's bring one of the guys over here. Now, come on over. Oh, cool. He's a guitarist, right? He's a guitarist? Oh, yeah, no question. Yeah, how you doing? Tell everybody your name and where you're from and... Well, my name is Andre Giles. Mm -hmm. I'm from Washington, D.C. originally. Mm -hmm. Um, Grew up my background, played with some local groups in D.C., a lot of go-go bands, uh, Perfect Image. Uh, Played, you know, with a gospel group in D.C., Evangelist Evangelist Green and the Traveling Five. I love the hat, man. That's cool. Oh, cool, cool, man. (laughs) Yeah, so. It's metal. It's metal, you know. You got to have a little metal. No question. Being a guitarist, right? Yeah, no question. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, somewhere, you know, we hooked up a group called Cairo Funk. Right. And uh, Brother Eddie Hazel used to live in D.C. And Tiki Fullwood used to live on Benner Road. And I was yeah. a little kid then. Yeah. And, um, you know, I used to go sneak into their little rehears- rehearsals and stuff and checking mm-hmm. them out. And there was Funkadelic back then, yeah, yeah. by the way. Um, These are related, so, by the way. Yeah. You got to tell that. You know? Yeah, somehow, you know, um, Eddie he's Hazel. Taller. He's taller than you, though. Oh, yeah, no he's question. Taller he's a lot taller he's than taller me. taller than everybody. God rest his soul. <laughs> yeah. and, and, he looks um, good. He looks good. Now, Brother Eddie Hazel uh, somehow hooked up with us. We had a little neighborhood band called Cairo Funk. Mm-hmm. And he used to come to our rehearsals and show me riffs and stuff like that, you know, his style. And oh, I was amazed, you know. So that's how I got introduced to the funk. Um, 1976, wow. I actually got a job mm-hmm. on the P-Funk Earth Tour selling T-shirts mm-hmm. on the Earth Tour with Slim Goody and Pops, wow. you know, back then. Mm-hmm. I made a lot of money, by the way, yeah. with no vending stands. I used to take Where the shirts and go out in the crowds, do that too. all the stadium gigs City, all though. over the country. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. Part of the garden. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, right. somehow I was like in and out, and yeah. then I got hooked up with Mr. Gary Scheider, Cordell Boogie Monson. Yeah. They took me under their wing and stuff, you know, and, um, you know, somehow down the road I wind up getting a chance to sit in with the funk. Um, Gary had his own group called the Royal First Family of Funk. I was mm-hmm. in his group, and then I wind up playing with Jerome Bigfoot Brelly mm-hmm. in the Mutiny Band. Wow. And uh, also, not to mention my man Will Harris, have his group called 30th Century Man. So that's where I got my rock flavor from. 
you know, um, wow, it's a long story, but I'm trying to make a long story short, yeah. you know, not not to make it too yeah, long. History, you, you know? know, you've been around for a while. Yeah, I've been know? around for a while. You know, Big G, that's like like my best friend, you know. You know, I still look at him like a, like he's my mentor. You know what happens real? after the interview? We, we're rock stars and all people in music and up writing books. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how yeah. It. yeah, so I wind up recording longer longer, you know? myself. I have two CDs out. Cool. Funkstore.com, uh, the Black Guitar Superhero, and Red Alert. Uh, anybody go on that on that site, you know, look it up. Raw Funk Records, you can pick that up. Very cool. You know, it's very popular. It seems like everybody likes it. Yeah. You know, so basically that's where I'm at today. You know, I sit in with George and P Funk All Stars off and on whenever I get a chance. You know, they'll let me jump on the stage. Yeah. You know, if they feel like it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll plug up and. <laughs> Do my thing too, you know. What was your most favorable family. gig that you played? You know, like your most memorable wow, gig most that you played with George. Gig, my most memorable gig. Wow, that's kind of weird. Maybe <laughs> New York, right here in New York somewhere. Um, there you go. We did a big con outdoor there. concert in New Jersey, and uh, yeah, that was like a memorial. You know, well, all the gigs, you know, all the gigs to me was like, you know. Big time for me, you know. I loved it. You know, I just love to play. That's period. That's just me. I just love playing. What, what kind of guitar are you play now? What do you use? Well, I, I play Stratocasters, all all sorts of guitars, you know, Gibson. It doesn't matter. You know, Flying Vs, you know. Yeah. I had, do you like the lead or you play like rhythm? I, both. Rhythm and lead, yeah. you know. Yeah. You should say lead and rhythm. Lead and rhythm. Lead and rhythm. <laughs> you know, I grew up on that Jan in the, back in the James lead. Brown era, so I, I kind of like that type of stuff, that type of rhythm. Very cool. The James Brown rhythm, you know. Yeah. Get on the good Thank you. Yeah. No question. Let's bring let's bring one of these guys up here. Let's yeah. come on up here. Just him. stand back here. Hey. And you, there he is right hey. here. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Now I like that shirt. The tie dye. Thank you. New York Thank Rock you. TV. Yes, New York Rock TV. This is my man Benzel, man. Love this man. Now I heard you play a little bongos and you play yeah. a little drumish. Well, you can't tell them. Shaker guy. Yes, shaker? I'm a shaker, but shaker. I'm a guitar player since I'm 13 years old. You know, I grew up. I wanted to be PC. Shakers need respect, man. They gotta. You know, I wanted to be PC. Like the cowbell, you know. I wanted to be PC when I was growing yeah. up. Yeah. I've been wow. playing guitar since I'm 13, wow. and for the past 19 years, I have a trio. Mm -hmm. I play guitar and sing, and I got these two free jazz horn cats mm -hmm. from back in the 60s: Perry Robinson on clarinet, mm -hmm. Mark Whitecage on sax. We call it Who Knows. We get up, we start to play, and we just let the music take us where it does. Okay. And then uh, we'll get into songs, and it's great. Mm -hmm. But um, 11 years ago, right. I hooked up with my friend Maruga again, who's a percussionist, played with George for years, recorded with George, mm -hmm. played with Jerry Garcia. And I was stage managing wow. in Michigan. And the keyboard player said, don't just stand there. And I said, what should I do? And he handed me shakers and told me to play. <laughs> what year was that now? That was 11 years ago, oh, right. 2003. Yeah. So I dug it. Right. So I bought a mess of shakers, and we're doing this tribute to Ola Tunji a couple of months later. And Maruga's introducing the band. And he says, wow, on shaker, you. Richie Nagin. <laughs> and the keyboard player whispered, shaking Nagin. And Maruga goes, shaking Nagin. <laughs> So through him, I went to do some gigs with him, cool. with George, carrying yeah. his stuff, and I got right. friendly with the crew. Yeah, yeah. And I showed up one day 11 years ago mm -hmm. in Miami during setup, and I said to the stage manager, Citrus, I said, hey, man, I brought my shakers. Can I play? Mm -hmm. And she said, sure. I'll set you up a microphone. And I've played with them for 11 years now. Cool. First few years, George didn't even know who I was. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, a, you there. It yeah. you know what? Right. it's an honor to play yeah. with them. Yeah. Through that, yeah. I've gotten to play with some of my heroes, like uh, Melvin Seals from the yeah. Jerry Garcia Band. Wow. And I play around here a lot with a lot of different so kinds of bands. it's good to be in the, in the right spot, you know? Yeah. I love to play music, you know? Yeah. Someone asked me, come down and play, I'll play. Yeah. You know, I play a lot of Grateful Dead bands around the area. I travel all over the country playing with different people. It's just a blessing. Cool. You know, I'm living my dream. You're from the Bronx. So I'm from Queens originally, but I live in the Bronx for the past 16 years. I'm a, you know, I have a day job. I'm cool. building and zoning law expediter, yeah. building department expediter. But and when you get the call to go on tour, you're there, right? If I can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just pick my spots. You know, I'm, I'm, 
I'd like to have a tour. If there's a people to go to Woodstock. You're not going to tell them no, right? No, I'll be there. I'll be in Woodstock yeah. next. Uh, Come on. When he wants. Right? Yeah. He shows up when he wants. I show up when I can. You know, if the tour coming up, I'll do probably half of it. Okay. So I got, you know, other commitments. Okay. Let's Wait, let's right. let's uh, bring one of the other guys up here with this instrument because there's so many guys here. But we're gonna talk to this guy. This guy now. Oh my God! Hope we didn't break it. No, no, I didn't break it. Oh man, come on. T- tell everybody your name. Go ahead. My name is William Thorin. Okay. And now you're from where? L.A. You said. L.A. Yep. Okay. Now you've been playing music for a while, and you have a strange instrument here. But please give him a sample. Come on. What is this now? What is this? It's a didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. A didgeridoo. <laughs> okay, now talk about where's that from? Where they play that? And what? Traditionally, it's from Australia. Okay. Um, but Are you Australian? You no, say? I'm from L.A. Okay. I started playing a <laughs> PVC pipe when I was 11 this for like six r- years. And <laughs> There's a new na- nationality. It's called L.A. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really getting Americanized, though. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, all right. So, and you had you find out about this instrument? That um, brother bought one randomly from some people in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. I started playing his. He wouldn't let me take his anywhere, so I made one out of PVC pipe. Wow. And then, yeah. Well, where'd, yeah. where'd you find this? The, what, uh, this is, I looks make like these th- now. So, oh, you made um, this is yours. You made it. Yeah, I went cool. deep down the the tunnel of didgeridoo. We no pun intended. <laughs> wood, the, this wood is from where? No. This is uh, bamboo, from bamboo from China. Yeah. Oh, wow. And would you you have to carve it, carve it out and? Yeah, you knock it out with rebar and then epoxy the pieces together. All right. Yeah. Now, what kind of sounds is this? What is it? It's like a horn, right? Yeah. Horn so time. this this is like a little mix with a didgeridoo and something more like a brass instrument, like a tuba. So the mouthpiece is more like a tuba. It's bigger, yeah. so I can play different notes. Because traditionally they play only about three notes, and this can play a couple more because I can get low. Right, let's so hear, let's hear yeah. something. Well, you got it right here, you know. Ooh. It's big. Watch out! You poke your eye out. <laughs> it's very comical. <laughs> yeah, it sounds very like a lot of yeah. different things. <laughs> if you eat a lot of beans and yeah, you listen exactly. to that, it's like, you know, it could be good. You get that All right. a lot. So you got one more guy over here, right? And then the Ian, why don't you come around and say hello? Hey, what's up, man? Well, no, hey, got right in the shot, right? This guy, he walked in at the right time. Sorry, because I, sorry, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Bring this guy over here. Come on over. Say hello. <laughs> did you read? How can you outshine with the digity do? Here's a guy right here. Well, he's a little tall guy. Another right, tall guy tall right here. Right. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now tell everybody your name and where you're from. Go ahead. Um, I'm William Vic. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Yes, now you play in the band and what are your keyboards? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Um, I'm the partner CEO of a um, production company called Sonic Society right. right now. Um, doing some low-key stuff, some stuff we can't really say, can't mm-hmm. disclose right now. But yeah, until you do it. Yeah, so yeah, I mean some pretty, some pretty big stuff. So um, we just look humble guys that really cool. do this music thing, just trying to do it for real. Now you've been playing keyboards. Now. Is that what you first started with? That's your first instrument you got into? Uh, not necessarily. I started on um, acoustic guitar. Right. And moved to keys at around eight, eight or nine years old. And you hooked up with what P Funk and yeah, man. With the keys, right? Yeah, it's actually funny. Um, family, I have family ties, and I didn't even know, man. One of my good friends before I even knew he was really family. So yeah. it's a great thing to already have mm-hmm. good chemistry with people before you even find out they're really tied to you. And you're so. from the area, you're from Baltimore. Um, not not originally. I'm from. I did a little moving around from New yeah. Jersey to Georgia to back to Jersey to Baltimore. So okay. I've been a little everywhere. And now you're currently on tour with the P Funk, uh, Funkadelic. You playing keys or you like you play nah. sometimes when you? Nah, I'm just I'm just just another fan, just just a part of the experience. Okay. So just no no actual ties, okay. <laughs> no actual ties. Okay. All right, so um, what's going on with these guys now? Now you got Ian, he's in the back over here. We're going to have to come all the way around because there's a connection going on. He's got the bass. Here's bass. He plays bass. Here's Ian. 
nice to meet you, Ian. Yeah, How you I'm doing? I'm doing great, man. Happy Tell to be here. Tell everybody where you're from and what, what, what instrument you play. You play bass? You're a bass that's, player? That's correct. Anybody that's curious, my name's Ian Truss. Uh-huh. They call me the space man. Right. And uh, I've put in many hours in the shed and on the, uh, the bandstand with this guy. Okay. Uh, grew up listening to Parliament, although I've never performed mm-hmm. with the band, and uh, mm-hmm. friendly with a couple of the bassists in the mm-hmm. band, and I'm just um, mm-hmm. kind of like Will, just uh, you know, working on my craft on a daily basis, trying to be the best that I can be. Um, I got this uh, beautiful custom bass right okay. here, uh, sponsored by this company, M Bases, out of Connecticut. Wow, that's nice. It's a work of art, so I'm, I mm-hmm. love this instrument. And that's um, wood tone, wood tone. Yeah, yeah. It looks a, like a, look like Fender type. Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically it's almost like. A, just like a really good design uh, uh, based on the fender you know leo mm-hmm. fender kind of you can't reinvent the wheel but maybe right, you can right, right. maybe you can improve upon it i don't right. know but yeah mm-hmm. you know i'm just uh always playing music i play with a lot of different people i do a lot of session work and mm-hmm. a little bit of touring and um currently i'm playing with this guy chris jacobs who's uh, really popular in the, the more the mid-atlantic region mm-hmm. and i have a long association with uh, brooks long and the mad dog no good which is a pretty happening r&b soul band mm-hmm. And uh, I'm starting my own band, leading my own band, which is called Ian Trussheim's Frequency Exchange. And really, uh, that band is just about, um, you know, self-expression and spiritual growth through the language of music and being being able to play f- freely. So I'm, I'm really excited about what the future has uh, in store for me. Very cool. Yeah. But how'd you, how'd you guys hook up? Uh, how'd this well, that, happen? That's a, that's a wild story, or it's a long story. But yeah. I moved to Baltimore maybe about five years ago, and... Uh, Ben and I just happened to be on the same gig. Mm-hmm. I helped him bring his drums in, and you know we just uh, we just mm-hmm. locked in. I mean, I've, like I said, I'm I'm a big fan of P Funk, mm-hmm. and uh, I know a lot of the music, mm-hmm. and we just kind of came from the same mindset with what we're trying to accomplish as a drummer and a bassist. Mm-hmm. And we just started, uh, we were kind of like a team for, uh, for a long time. I mean, obviously we still are, but when, when Ben started really hitting with P-Funk, uh, you know, we couldn't gig as much as we were, but we were playing with a lot of different artists doing everything from hip hop to fusion to singer songwriter stuff. And I mean, we were just, we were just I mean, hustling. These guys were like touring together and you, but you were actually playing too? Oh together? yeah, yeah. By storm. Yeah. <laughs> we took yeah. Baltimore yeah. by storm. And just we were just shedding like crazy, kind of like what Will's talking about, and what Ben said. We you know, lived up the street from each other. Lived, yep, that's we exactly right. One mile away. Yeah, one we mile and a half away from each other. Yeah. And we'd be over there every day doing it. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Yo, you up, yo? <laughs> this guy would wake me up. I'd hear him. I sometimes leave the door unlocked, and I wake up to him drumming in the basement. And uh, you know, I'm really grateful to know Ben because he's really. Uh, I actually played the little drums, but the basement too. But uh, oh, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. That's shaking that's the, the basement to too much. My father didn't like the shaking of the house. Right. You know? It can get loud, but uh, yeah, I, definitely yeah. house. I do that a lot. That's, that's what I do. rock the house, right? Yeah. We we had this uh, fusion band called CTW, which he mentioned earlier, and uh, I'm pretty sure the neighbors hated us because we we would go 100 percent crazy for hours, just like really trying to push ourselves to uh, past our musical limitations. And I'm, I'm grateful to know Ben for that because he helped he, he helped he helped me uh, take my uh, career and my game to the next level. So, very yeah, cool. very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it worked out because Jesus. You're, still, you're, just still, <laughs> you're just still friends and you're still yeah. playing together. And it seems like a big family here, you know. Oh, this is great. what we do. This is what All we right. do. So uh, we're going to get some information out there. If they want to find out more what's going on with you, tell everybody out there how they can find out where you're going to be and, and, you know, and, and the websites and the Facebook pages and all that. Go ahead. Yeah, it's very simple. My phone number is, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can find me on Facebook at Benzel Baltimore Cowan. You can like my fan page at Benzel mm-hmm. Baltimore. You can Instagram me at Benzel B. Moore, mm-hmm. which is lowercase Benzel and B M O R E.
with Ian, and Ian's with uh, with P Funk. Yeah, I guess metaphysically, you know, <laughs> I got I got some um, some connections. I know a lot of people in the band. I'm not a personal member of the band, but a big fan, and have performed with uh, Ben on a lot of just like local gigs and mm-hmm. kind of you know Mid Atlantic region, and uh, mm-hmm. you know I just do a lot of playing. I'm a freelance musician, do a lot of studio mm-hmm. work. Um, I lead my own band, which is called Ian Trustheim's Frequency there Exchange. Go. I got this uh, wonderful mm-hmm. instrument uh, custom made by John McGinney out there of Connecticut. Go. The company's called M Bases. Nice, and, um, nice bass. Man. Yeah, it's it's really wonderful. Cool. I love it. It's uh it's actually pretty new. I mean, it's totally hand made by hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. And um, I play with a guy, Chris Jacobs, who's right. uh, a, you know pretty uh, got a good following yeah. in the Mid Atlantic region, and I'm also part of Brooks Long and the Mad Dog No Good, great soul band. Wow. You can check it's them out. Good. Yeah, so you know, it's the life of a freelance guy. Yeah, I just kind of hook up with Benzel. Man. Well, that uh, when I first moved to Baltimore, we just happened to be on a gig together. I helped him bring his drums in. We kind of hit it off before the gig, and from the first couple notes, it was uh, we just we come from the same mindset of yeah. how we approach music and the way we want the the what's called the pocket to sound. And we did did a ton of gigs together, a lot of you know funk oriented stuff, and even playing some P funk music mm-hmm. with other bands. But also doing jazz fusion, R and B, hip hop, and we just kind of we became really good buddies. Once we, I, I should say that once we did this gig, yeah. we realized that we lived no more than a mile down the wow. road from each other, and we would just yeah, hang we out. We didn't know that. I mean, because I, I, I was really pretty early on when I moved to Baltimore that I met him, mm-hmm. and it just where I happened, I found a place off Craigslist, and he happened to live down the road, mm-hmm. and so we hung out every day and just and really played and worked on our craft and. Uh, and then what year was that? Was that was 2010 and 2011 right. when we were really yeah. hitting a lot together. Mm-hmm. And right around that time, uh, 2011, mm-hmm. is when Ben got uh, a big call from P-Funk. You know, he's always been involved and, and played on and off, right. but he kind of got the, the opportunity to really be the guy driving the bus yeah. for the band or one of the guys it's such a big band you know there's he's, usually you mentioned before he sat in when he was a kid yeah and there was like three other drummers like, on the yeah, gig but they like did 15 he was he yeah exactly it's in. it's amazing wow. but the the thing about p-funk that's really cool or one of the great things is they just put on such a long show you know some bands will play right. like three sets no they just they just play from beginning to end yeah, so you got to have a couple people on reserve because yeah, yeah. i mean nobody could do a, a show that that intensity yeah, yeah. and just play the entire time um so big guy he's big tall guy he's big know? guy yeah so guy. you know i'm happy to be up here in new york it's really cool, cool to meet you and yeah, be a part yeah. of your show and uh Thank you. i'm just grateful for the opportunity and you know how'd you come up you, you now somebody came and told me maybe you came up with the name benzel or oh yeah yeah, yeah. so on one of these former gigs i was yeah. telling you about with uh that we used to just do, you know, I mean, a lot of club dates and, and we were, we were just hustling, you know, we all still hustle. And, uh, and I think, I think what it was, I'm just trying to kind of make sure I get the story straight, but we were just kind of goofing with them. And I, yeah. I was calling them, you know, of course there's Denzel Washington. Yeah. So I was mm-hmm. just, I was just being stupid. I called him Benzel Washington. I mean, it's not even that funny. We, we were just goofing. We were hanging yeah, out yeah. before the gig, wow. but it's like, I saw like, you know, like a light go off in his yeah. head and, He's like Benzel, I like that, and obviously from Baltimore, and so he kind of cool. he kind of took on that perso- persona. Yeah. He really embraced it, and uh, well, I mean, it's there a cool go. name, and uh, yeah. it's just kind of funny story. I mean, honestly, it was a couple guys, that guy Brooks Long that I yeah. mentioned. We were all hanging out. My buddy Kentavious Jones, who uh, great singer, and Ben and I used to do a lot of gigs with Kentavious, and we were all just goofing off before the gig, and uh, and it, he really yeah, took to it. it he he on. embraced it, and then yeah. it caught on. You know, now it's like. Yeah. You know, some people think Benzel's yeah. the the real name, yeah. which it is. You know, or it's that's his cool. stage name. Yeah, well, yeah, it's funny. It's unique. So, <laughs> he's a great guy, there and and he's been a mentor and really uh, inspired me to improve, take my craft to the highest level, which uh, is a never ending journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Well, you're gonna funk out right here, right now, that's and the do the only way I know how to. Yeah, you yeah. know, I got everything on the one, as they say in P funk. Okay. And is there any way you get in touch with you? You can tell everybody out there if they want to. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, and the P Funk and, uh, well, of course, uh, right. Benzel. I know uh, with Benzel, you know, you can just check out Benzel Baltimore on Facebook or there YouTube. You I mean, he's got his. He's got a pretty big social media presence. I know he does Instagram, and right. honestly, if you if you Google Benzel Baltimore, I'm sure yeah, it'll yeah. just show up. And yeah. um, you know, same thing with Parliament Funkadelic. I mean, that's just such a uh, a staple of American music. I mean, they've been around for probably close to 40 years, which is a pretty amazing thing. Maybe more than 40 years, honestly. Cool. 
and uh, it's got to be now that I'm doing the math. Uh, so, you know, P Funk, Parliament Funkadelic. That's the beautiful thing about yeah, Google. Yeah. I'm lazy. It's like anything. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I might try to remember the name of a song, right, right. and I just start typing in the lyrics <laughs> I know on the search engine, and it'll yeah. show up. It'll finish the sentence. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I personally, you know, if you're interested in, in my music, Ian Trussheim's Frequency Exchange, I have a iantrussheim.com. That's kind of a wild last name. I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys to try and figure it out. But, um, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, unfortunately, I don't know for sure if Ben has a website. But like I said, his social media presence is, and he's a pretty established guy. So he probably, Benzel Baltimore. Benzel That's Baltimore. You have to type in and you find out. You yeah, find you, out you'll figure it out from there, you know. Well, I want to thank awesome. you very much thank you, for man. coming on and rocking out with us. Absolutely. And, uh, I want to thank everybody else, and and there was a guy that's in uh, Dark Nights of the Soul, and he was the drummer, and yeah. he recently just had a stroke, and you know my heart goes out to him and yeah. the family, and the rest of the guys in the band, and and uh, just uh, I hope that uh, everything just uh, doesn't uh, you know suffer and everything. Absolutely, you know prayers to him and his yeah. family, and and for. Um, you know, speedy recovery, or for for the the best thing to ha that can happen to happen. You yeah, know, and we're uh, we're all praying for him and his family. Yeah, maybe uh, Benzel could do a little uh, drumming uh, tribute to him. That's right. Yeah, nice. I'm sure he. I know he'd love to do that. And we'd all like to. You know, the music is a powerful thing, and maybe we can uh, we can put put yeah. some of that good stuff out there for your for your Helping buddy. Helping and healing. You know, it's about giving the love. Right? Giving the love, absolutely. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for watching. Watch New York Rocks. Who rocks better than us? New York Rocks, baby. Happy to be Nobody. here. Nobody. We rock the best. Yeah. Okay. Nobody. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>